Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video we had a look at Monk, which allows us to interact with our MongoDB a little bit easier, or by writing less code, by giving us this extra layer, so to say, which we can access, which takes a lot of work off us and does this in the background. In this video, we'll have a look at Mongoose. And Mongoose is not directly comparable to Monk, it is a lot more than Monk. Monk is just, you might say, an extension to the MongoDB driver. Mongoose has a different concept. It is a fully fledged um, OEM, which means that, to put it easy, it represents our data, our documents in our NoSQL database as JavaScript objects. We define a schema for a certain well, object or how our entries in the database should look like. And then we create models of this schema. And then we use these models to well, create JavaScript objects and to work with these objects in a very natural way. And all our changes we do there are then upon certain commands written to the database and reflected there. And we can work with that on a very uh, yeah, yeah, natural or high level way without having to uh, doing all the nitty gritty things ourselves. The best thing to learn it is to actually see it. So let's dive into it. What I will do is I will take my MongoDB off project here, duplicate it and just rename it. And once this is done, come on, um, I will go to my package.json file. I'll remove MongoDB. We won't need it here. Mongoose has all this built in. And then I'll stop my server here. I will, well, navigate into this newly created folder. And here I will install with the save flag, <laughs> with the save flag, uh, mongoose. So with this, I got mongoose installed, as you can see now in the package.json file. And to use it, I will go in my routes index.js file here again. I will get rid of the, well, MongoDB related things here. And of course, I will also get rid of all the code here, all the, well, basically everything related to MongoDB to be in our routes. Okay, so now I got this emptied up again. And now let's use Mongoose. The first thing I will do is at the top, of course, I will require it so that we can use it. Require and then Mongoose. And then I want to establish a connection and I will keep this connection open throughout this file here. So I will do it here at the top by using this Mongoose object here, this variable, and then calling the connect method on it. And then as an argument, I have to provide the path to the database. And this path, we can use it here from the monk project, has the same, well, form as it does here. So no mongodb colon slash 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 at the beginning, just the direct address of our database. So, now this is the connection to our MongoDB and now it is open and we can work with it. The next thing I'll do is, as I already said, it's all about creating this schemas which kind of tell Mongoose how the data in the database should look like, how it is, how is, it is structured. Therefore, I will create a new variable here called schema and this will be, well, not that, will be related or refer to our mongoose schema object here. And what I will do next is I will define the schema our user data here should have. So I will call this user data schema and with this create a new schema. And here I just pass as an argument to the constructor, well, a JavaScript object which defines the schema. And in this case, we got a title, a content, and an offer. All three will be strings. I will set title, which should be a string. I will set content, which should be a string and offer. Now, the cool thing is, 
This schema will define how Mongoose will write the data to the database, of course. But it will also do some validation. Now, not regarding these types here, but for example, let's say we want this title to be required, I would replace it with a separate JavaScript object where I would have first all type is string, and then I would set required true. Now, of course, to know whatever, which options you have of specifying here, you should have a look at the Mongoose documentation because Mongoose is a bit too complex to cover it completely in one video. But this is how you generally work with it and how you define these schemas and why they are so important. Because now we won't be able to save something to the database which doesn't specify a title because we're saying the title is required. It may not be empty or null. Okay, so this is this schema I define. Now this would work like this, but I will come back to it in a minute. But first let me continue. After creating the schema, I will now create a model of that schema. So this schema is just like the blueprint. And now I will create a new model, which I will call user data. And this will be of type mongoose model here. We call this method. And here I first pass the name of this model and then the schema which should be used as a blueprint for this model. So just to get this differentiation clear, here we just define the layout, whereas here we're then creating an actual model of that, which we can later use to instantiate it and to actually write data to the database. And this is, if you watch my Laravel videos, highly comparable to Laravel's eloquent, this whole concept. Now with that, what Mongoose would do, it would create and store this data in a collection called user data with an S at the end, so the plural form of this model name. Now we already have our collection called user dash data. Of course, we could create a new one here, but if you want to force a certain collection name, you may pass an additional JavaScript object to this schema constructor here which will contain some options. In this case, I only specify one option, which is collection, the collection key. And I define that the collection name will be user data. Now this will override the default of taking this in the plural form and our collection will be user dash data, which it was before in the past videos. So this is how we set up the schema and how we use it in our model. And now let's do the actual database operations and how this works. First, let's have a look at getting some data. Here, what I want to do is I will call user data, our model here. And through this model, I can directly call find with no arguments to find all entries. And then Mongoose provides us the then function to basically handle the results when it's done, once it is done with the database operation. And in there I will pass a function which has the retrieved documents. And in this function, I can then call my, well, rest render method to return the response and render this index file here and set the items equal to the documents we retrieved here. This is all, this is how it works. And this is what I meant with abstracting this away. Yes, in a way, of course, it looks like a database access here with the find method, but we're using our setup model here. And we would set up such a model for each the collection type or each, yeah, each collection we have in our database. Like again, if you're familiar with this, with Eloquent and Laravel. So this is how we find or get our data. Next, let's have a look at storing it. Well, for this, I will create a new variable called data, which is a new user data. So now we're using our model to create an instance of it. I can then pass my item, which I define up here, into the constructor of this model, 
to automatically assign all these fields because of course, and this is important, this has the same structure as our schema. That's why we define the schema. So now I have the data here and then I just call data save and this will also store it to the database. No insert or anything, just data save. This will do that. If we have a look at the update method here, here I would again use my model, then I would call find to find the entry I want to update and I can use the find by ID method here to make it easy and just pass in the ID and this ID may be a number or a string or an object ID and Mongoose will automatically figure out how it has to transform it to actually get our database entry here. So I also provide a callback here and this callback will have either an error or the documents it found. And now we could just to show an example and we showed that a real app handled this error by well outputting error no entry found and then of course we should also render back some error response in this case. But here I will just continue and what I will do is now I will update this document. So I will set doc title and I'm getting this auto completion hub because this is the schema we defined. And I will set it to, well, basically whatever we have stored in our request here and therefore I can get rid of this item here. I'll also update the content. And finally I will set doc offer equals request body offer. And now I call doc save to save this, but not as a new entry, but just to update this entry with the new information. Finally, let's go to removing n elements in our database. This is very easy. You can use again our model user data and then the find by ID and remove method. And well, this does what the name implies. I pass an ID, but now to execute this, I will call the exec function at the end. Because I'm not fetching any callback here, um, I'll just leave it like this. Of course, I also deleted this redirect I just saw. So I definitely want to add this here and here. And now let me restart this server for this new folder here. And I already have one entry here because I test this, but let me create a new, a new entry with new content by me, insert and get data. Now you can see it here. And now let's update this first entry with, uh, let's say, also new, new, new update, load. As you can see, this works. And finally, to get rid of it, let's try this out. Works. So this is how we use Mongoose. And now I'll be honest, Mongoose has a lot more going on than what, than what I showed you here. Um, you can also use relations or as it's called in the new NoSQL world, populations to relate certain collections. Um, you can do a lot more with these models. They really have a great validation built in and so on. And this might be something for future videos, but this here should get you going and help you get started with Mongoose. In the description, you will find a link for more information if you want to dive in a little bit deeper right now. See you in the next videos. Bye.